Good afternoon, dear saints. Great to see you again today. Uh, Thank you to all of you who came out this morning for Holy Communion. It looked like our schedule online was full, that there were no empty spots. But remember, when we do this, we have uh, 15-minute blocks, but we can also put two families on each 15-minute block. One family sits on one side, one family sits at the other, and we're still distanced. So uh, keep that in mind. We're working on a way for the website to show that, that there'll be two spots available for each 15-minute time period. So keep that in mind. Tuesdays and Thursdays, Holy Communion on Thursday from 4 until 6, and we are talking about extending that to 7 to allow more people to come after work. Uh, This Wednesday evening, tomorrow night, we'll gather again for um, evening prayer, and then with that, a new message of God's promises for us. Today, as we gather in the afternoon, it is daily prayer on page 296. These are the prayers for at noon. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Listen to my prayer, O God, and do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Well, our reading for today is, uh, our psalm for today is Psalm 26, verses 1 through 3 and 8 through 12. The psalmist writes this. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity, and I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Prove me, O Lord, and try me. Test my heart and my mind, for your steadfast love is before my eyes, and I walk in your faithfulness. O Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Do not sweep me away. Do not sweep my soul away with sinners, nor my life with bloodthirsty men, in whose hands are evil devices, and whose right hands are full of bribes. But as for me, I shall walk in my integrity. Redeem me and be gracious to me. My foot stands on level ground in the great assembly. I will bless the Lord. You know, there's wonderful words in there that we hear in some of the evening services. Oh, Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. We use that same thing when we hear the word of God in evening prayer. Oh, Lord, I love the habitation of your house and where your glory dwells. And God's promises, remember, dear child, are not his glory does not only dwell here in church. It dwells in his word and in his sacraments. When we take opportunities like this and we're in his word, there are two things that are going on. God is indeed dwelling in his word, active and working in your life through the reading of your word. St. Paul reminds us faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. And the other thing that is happening as we're gathered together in God's word is he continues to come to us. He continues to strengthen our faith that we might trust in him. Oh Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Our gospel reading for today, our second reading from the gospel of St. Mark, excuse me, St. Luke, the fourth chapter. Now remember, this is the beginning of Jesus' ministry. He's been baptized. He has been uh, uh, stepped in now to the position of being the Messiah. And we begin to see his power. And he went down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and he was teaching them on the Sabbath. And they were astonished at his teachings, for his words possessed authority. And in the synagogue there was a man who had an evil spirit, an unclean demon, and he cried out in a loud voice, Ha! What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who we are. I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him down in the midst, he came out of him, having done him no harm. And they were amazed and said to one another, What is this word? 
For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. And reports about him went into every place in the surrounding region. And he arose, and he left the synagogue, and he entered Simon's house. Now Simon's mother-in-law was ill with a high fever, and they they appealed to him on her behalf. And he stood over her, and he rebuked the fever, and it left her, and immediately she rose and began to serve him. Now when the sun was setting, all of those who had, who had any who were sick with them with various diseases brought them to him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And demons also came out of many, crying, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak because they knew that he was the Christ. And when it was the day, he departed and went into a desolate place. And he and the people sought him and came to him and would have kept him there from leaving. But he said to them, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to other towns as well, for I was sent for this purpose. And he was preaching in the synagogues of Judea. Our Lord, at the beginning of his ministry here, there are a couple of things that just jump out at us. First of all, the demons. When they see Jesus the Christ, the Son of God, they know who he is quickly. And like this first demon, almost trying to pull the power play. Ha! I know who you are. Trying to uh, seem like they're great and they have a lot of power and they won't have to submit to Jesus. But he just silences them. He doesn't say a word, he just silences them and they cannot speak. Because he will not let his power and his presence be known through the demons. Jesus has power over the demons and it isn't long we see that he has power over other things, authority over other things. Peter's mother-in-law is sick and and that's how we know that Peter was married. Peter's mother-in-law was sick with a fever and they asked Jesus to come and he did and the fever left her. So we see right away Jesus has authority over the demons and the spiritual world. We see Jesus having authority over the the sickness of a fever and, and all of those people that were brought to him, he healed them of any disease or any infirmity they had. We can see his power and his authority. And that was one of the questions that came up as the people were, were there watching Jesus. They said, uh, who is this? Who has a, what is this word for what authority and power commands the unclean spirits? And they come out they began to recognize that Jesus was not like the rest of the rabbis. The other rabbis would come in and they would preach, and it was all opinion. Jesus would come in with authority because he knew the Scriptures. They were about him and about God's promises to rescue his people, and he, th- he taught with that authority. And so that we would know that that authority to teach that way really came from the Son of God. He would do the miracles so that we would see that as well. Who is this word? What is this word? Well, when the people are asking that question, what they're really drawing us back into is God's word. What is this word? What is this word? Well, if we back all the way up to the beginning, we see this word. God in creation is creating, doing what he does, bringing things into existence. And how does the scripture tell us that God created In the beginning, God said. He spoke. He used his word. Now, God wouldn't have had to use a word to create. He could have just created, but he used a word. That word we'll see. John, the gospel writer John, points us back to. In the beginning of the gospel of St. John, right in the first chapter, in the first verse, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God in the beginning. Well, when God created and used His Word, Jesus is that creative Word, creating Word. The Word made flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus, what is this Word? It's our Savior, showing His authority over the demons and over the diseases and all things. And showing his power and great mercy to us as well. 
It was the end of the day of the Sabbath. Saturday afternoon, the sun was going down and the Sabbath was over, which meant people were freed then to do many things. One of the Sabbath laws was there were only so many steps you could take each day or each day of the Sabbath. So as that law now was closed because the end of the day, people began bringing all of their sick to Jesus. And the scriptures point this out clearly. When the people bring their sick to Jesus, Jesus heals them all. It's sundown on Saturday. And he doesn't leave until the next day when it's light. It's a pretty good chance that Jesus was healing through the night. Healing all of these people that came, every infirmity, everything they had, healed by Jesus. And when he gets ready to go, the people were, were not wanting him to leave. They were trying to get him to stay. And there's a great reason for that. If Jesus would step into Divine Shepherd or Blackhawk or Piedmont or Somerset or Rapid and cure everyone that's here, how, what would our reaction be? Stay with us. Stay with us and continue to heal everyone's here. But Jesus does something even more. He says this, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns as well, for I was sent for this purpose. You see, if Jesus came right now and healed the COVID-19 and all the things in our state, we would look to him and we would just be amazed. And in fact, people are crying out to Jesus right now to heal our ills, to stop the disease, so to stop the virus so that we can get back to our lives. But what Jesus points us to is that there is something more important than the physical healing that Jesus offers. What's more important is having the good news preached into our ears. Remember what Paul writes, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. This good news that he preaches to us is the news that Jesus is our Savior and that's the news that he left that village to preach. Our Lord knows of our sufferings. He knows of the problems from the virus and all of the effects that's having on everything. And he is sympathetic to those. And he will heal and bring healing according to his good will. But even more important than that is hearing this good news. Hearing, dear child of God, that your sins are forgiven by Christ on the cross. And there isn't anything that will happen that can happen in this world that can put Jesus back in the tomb and put your sins back on you. You're forgiven because of this great good news of God sending a Savior into our world to die for us, to rise for us, to live today, and to one day welcome us home to be with him. What great good news. In the name of Jesus, amen. We pray. O Lord, have mercy upon us, O Christ. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Faithful God, whose mercies are new every morning, we humbly pray that you would look upon us in mercy and renew us by your Holy Spirit. Keep us safe, our going out and our coming in, and let your blessing remain with us throughout this day. Preserve us in your righteousness and grant us a portion in eternal life which is in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. 
For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts to direct and rule us according to your will, to comfort us in all afflictions and defend us from all error, and to lead us into all truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dear saints, Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Alleluia. Tomorrow night we gather again together for uh, evening prayer. Six o'clock, live streamed. Everything else on the website, the sign up for Holy Communion, those things there as well. Uh, If you have any needs, if you know of anybody that has any needs, physical needs as well, please let us know and we will do our best to help them. Go in his peace. Thanks be to God.